Yeah, wow, thank you for still being here. It's been such a rich and abundant morning. And somehow I want to start today um, really reconnecting to what Inchi shared. I don't know why, but I feel very tearful right now. Um, yeah, and just realizing, being grateful for the preciousness of what we have right here, right now, that we're in this tent, we're safe, we're safe. Yeah, and there's so many people at this moment in this world that are not safe. And that's part of what Jen is. That's part of what Jen is about. Yeah, when we look at this slide, you know, and we reconnect to the vision that Ross shared at the beginning, this dream, you know, even I just love the dream of getting an institution to pay for 50 eco-villages around the world. It's so great. I think we should pick that one up and maybe the time is ripe today. Yeah, because it's still needed. Yeah, and this is the work we're all doing. And we're not doing it alone, you know. We need to be very clear and in a way honoring also. This is Gen Europe. And as Ross said, Gen Europe has been the backbone of the Global Eco Village Network. And it's also because there's a lot of abundance in Europe in comparison with many other places in the world. You know, it's based on a past that we share with the world. And we cannot solve the problems the planet faces looking at any one place, building any one community, focusing on any one region. And I think what Gen Europe has accomplished in the past years is just amazing. The connection, the deepening of care, love, relationship between the different national networks across Europe has been, um, I think, astounding. And Gen Europe is becoming again an example and a hothouse for new ideas, new inspiration. Yeah. And similar things are happening in the other regions. You know, gatherings like this are taking place in the other regions, in Genoa, in Latin America, in Casa, in North America, in Gen Africa. Yeah. So it's a very rich. Um, network that we stand on. And you can read the vision of Jen here, which is about global solidarity. It's about, you know, as, as, um, as we just heard about Bafut, the eco-village of Bafut in Cameroon. In Jen, we know when the military are standing outside the gates of Bafut and all the people are fleeing to Bafut eco-village to find a safe place for the night. And from there, they're going into the forest. We hear these things. We know these things about each other and we give that solidarity of at least knowing, being aware of what is happening in Turkey and how this feels to Ali and Inchi when this is happening. Yeah, and it's so beautiful what we are doing this morning because in a way it's, it's building on each other because I want to speak also about these networks and the deepening of networks. You know, what networks become when we build on the emergence in the network, and we crystallize the core patterns from emergence, we go on to consolidate the network within Europe, across the regions, to build a global, a global community. Yeah? And from there, once we're able to do that, new realities start arising. We are able to start um, passing on the knowledge and start creating transformation on higher levels. It's what Mauche spoke about when she said, we were invited by the Spanish government to work with empty standing villages. And we're invited also because they see we're part of a global network. The same thing happened in Zimbabwe. Yeah, they started their local greening schools network for years. We spoke to a minister of environment at a conference. He went back to Zimbabwe and said, it's unbelievable, you're doing this here on our doorstep. We didn't know. And they started working together with them on a national program to implement these schools. So it's like building from individual communities, individual eco-villages, individual national networks, individual regions, 
building this global reality which will really allow us to build a bridge into the future together. Yeah, and these are the networks of Jen. And, you know, maybe we can just take a moment to connect while we're sitting here. Just connect to the eco-villages that we come from. Some of them are huge communities, thousands of people with global networks themselves. Yeah. The national networks we come from, the countries, the riches of culture, the diversity, yeah. and also just reaching out inwardly to the other regions, the Asian energy that is present here, the African energy, the Latin American energy, the North American energy, and just welcoming it, welcome it here. Yeah, and uh, at the core, if we look at what is the core DNA, what is the core DNA in Jen? At the moment, we recognize more and more it's about regeneration, it's about healing. We used to call it sustainability, and it's no longer enough. It's about healing what was broken, healing our hearts, healing our nervous systems, healing our communities, healing the systems around us. Yeah, so the core DNA of Jen, and many of you yesterday um, were at this afternoon where we built community together and you drew one of the eco-village principles and many of us are carrying them around. If you didn't receive one yesterday, if you didn't manage to come, there are still some here on the table and you're free to come and draw one for your time here. And it's a symbol for the diversity that comes together in eco-village design, in the pattern of eco-village design. And these eco-village principles, the eco-village design cards, are becoming the DNA of Gen, the core tool that we are using in the different projects to link us across the globe. They include images from all around the globe, and we can take them everywhere and work with them in the communities on the ground to recognize what we are doing. That if one community is focusing more, um, Jake was just speaking about the diversity of the flowers. And when we travel around the world and we see the communities, we see the diversity. But in that diversity, we can see the connections. We can learn to see the connections and the similarity. We can see what each community is focusing on now, and we can also see what would be the next step for this community for, to fulfill its potential in an even stronger way. So community being a pathway, a process, not an outcome, we can see, we can start seeing how we walk the path together. And this also becomes the place of invitation to others to join us. So moving from being a network, which we are, and strengthening those relationships, as has been shown before, continuing to strengthen those relationships. What starts happening as we crystallize our knowledge is that we start becoming a learning community together, where each piece in the system is a center, a place from which new knowledge grows. We learned from the Danish Eco-Village Network how they are including refugees and working with trauma and healing through community and nature. We learned from the Bloom Project how we can work with economy in new ways. Eco-Gamer, how we can play games to create eco-villages. So each of these projects, each eco-village, each place keeps feeding new inspiration and new information into the field. And what we're doing here at this conference and what we're constantly doing in the network is exchanging, allowing that information to flow. I wanted to show you a chart about Gen and the core of Gen, which is, I would say, the Gen board. Daniel is currently the president, and there are many other board members here. But where we have two representatives from each of the regions. We have the General Assembly of Gen, where we have nine representatives from each of the regions. And Gen Europe is just right now looking at who are the right people to 
come into this General Assembly to really allow the, the information flow from Gen Europe to fully nourish that global field. And of course, there's also more and more cross connections between the regions themselves. But this information flow is what nourishes us, what keeps us alive, what keeps us inspired. And it's from there that Gen as a whole crystallizes our core knowledge, our core pieces, our core pieces of information as we move forward. So it's from where the Ecovillage design cards have been crystallized, and this has gone through the journey of Gaia education, where the mandala was first formulated by 24 Ecovillage educators, to going back to the community, seeing how is this working for you, what is changing, what is new. One thing we learned is that the term culture is super important in communities on the ground. In Gaia education, we used to use the term and still use the term worldview, which is a very helpful word. But in many of the communities on the ground, people, worldview is a Western word for them. But culture, they all know. And their spirituality, their roots are their culture. And we even see it in the SDGs today that there is not one SDG that is directly linked to culture even though culture is one of the deeply empowering roots that people stand on. You know, I often say this, but I'll say it again, yeah? We have beautiful African women putting chemicals on their skin to have lighter skins. We have beautiful European women putting chemicals on their skins to look darker, yeah? We have women changing the shape of their eyes, the change of their bodies, the shape of their hair. Yeah, we're using a lot of chemicals for all this stuff. Yeah, just giving one example of what happens when people are no longer at home in their body, in their own skin, on their own earth, and in their own roots. Culture is important. And NextGen will be the first to share with us that when NextGen comes together across cultures, there's a celebration. And everybody falls in love with everybody else. You know, there's a beauty in seeing each other, in seeing the diversity. We love that, yeah? So we need to move away from a global culture that focuses on certain concepts of beauty. And that's part of who we are as an eco-village network. That's why culture is important. And in Gen, we have transformed worldview to culture. But it's building and it's constantly relating back to Gaia education. But there's this relationship to the ground, to the communities on the ground, that tell us what is needed next. And it's again, it's from the ground that we learned about the eco-village implementation programs. That there is more needed to support more communities to transition, to becoming places of healing, places of regeneration. People want this to happen in their regions, in their countries. Um, and one way that this happens is that we see that eco-village, you know, if you've ever seen the matrix, you have this choice of taking the red pull and the blue pull. Eco-village is like that pull. You know, if you really take in the eco-village principles and you decide to go for it, not to step into, you know, I want to be with security, but to step into I'm going for what is true in my heart, it will transform you. And the first eco-village hub is you. It's yourself. It's your lifestyle. You know, it's an eco-village lifestyle. The second eco-village hub is what we call eco-village projects. It's small projects that are doing maybe a learning center, maybe a permaculture garden, maybe harvesting teas. All of these are core ingredients, maybe an urban roof garden, yeah, or an organic cafe in the city that shares information. Yeah. The next one is eco-communities. These are small eco-villages, yeah, below 20 inhabitants, like small eco-villages. We call them eco-communities because in Africa, when we say, you know, we have an eco-village with seven inhabitants, they think we are very strange, yeah? Their family is like 13, you know? So, yeah, and then we have eco-villages, which are between 20 to a few thousand, yeah? We have eco-cities like Auroville. We have eco-regions. We need to have eco-countries and a Gaia world, an eco-world, a regenerative world. So 
acknowledging and celebrating this whole bandwidth of activity is part of what Jen does. And at the same time, we also learn from the ground about the Ecovillage implementation programs. So we go out and collect the information. We learn from the regions. We learn from Gen Europe about Ecovillage incubation, the CLIPS program, how to support Ecovillages that are starting up. And we have the Ecovillage incubation program. We learned from the ground from Gen Africa about eco-village development programs, transitioning more and more traditional villages to eco-villages, acknowledging that these are often the places that safeguard nature around them. Where there's a big push, don't, in my eyes at least, don't believe that it's a natural law that human beings are moving to cities. Yeah? And that it's a natural law that so and so many people will be living in cities by 2050. Yeah? We see that people are forced to move into cities by mining companies, by agro-industry. People are being pushed off their land. The, the center of protection of environment are the communities, and the indigenous communities are showing this to us at the moment, where more indigenous leaders than ever before are being prosecuted or even killed for standing up against mining companies, against logging companies. It's the communities that protect place, land, that love land, forest, place. Yeah. So the power of community, the power of supporting rural communities to transition into truly become, becoming empowered regenerative communities. You saw from Denmark the information about refugees and we have the emergencies program that is growing again from the ground around the world. We have the urban eco-neighborhoods which is currently just starting to grow from so many urban eco-village projects around the world. So. After this, we're actually going to have a workshop this morning and this afternoon with 10 Estonian villages, 10 Estonian village leaders that are interested in becoming the start-up hub for an Estonian eco-village development program. And if you want to have a look at how we work with that, please feel free to come and witness and get involved. If you want to know more regularly about what is happening in the whole world of eco-villages, we invite you to sign up to the GEN newsletter. If you want to support GEN as a whole, which includes GEN Europe, also includes GEN Africa and all the other regions, sign up as a friend of GEN. Because in that way we are honoring the fact that funds are more abundant in some places than in others. And with the Friends of Jen, you can support the whole of Jen. So there's a table just across and you're really welcome to go there. And lastly, if you feel called, if this whole conference, everything you heard this morning, is putting you on fire, you know, there's an invitation to you to consider becoming a Jen ambassador. And learning, how do I speak about Jen to others? How can I get hold of the newest tools and newest presentations from the various regions? And you always become an ambassador of Gen and an ambassador of your region. So all these invitations are there for you. And thank you for your attention.